your boy KJ has gone completely off. This is a film study from the Mississippi State LSU game season opener. State shocks the world, beats LSU in Baton Rouge. Uh, State better than you thought, LSU. Maybe not as good as you thought. KJ Costello was outstanding on third downs. So let's look at that. There's a million things you could dissect. Offense, defense, touchdown plays, explosive plays. This is a huge part of the game. The difference in the two teams on third down, especially third and long. So looking at the stats here. Overall, Mississippi State was 8 of 16 on third down conversions and uh, LSU 5 of 17. So State, you know, a good portion better. But when you dive into it a little more specifically, look at the comparison in their third down attempts. Look at third and long. Third and long being third and nine or more that you need to convert. State was five of nine on third and longs, and LSU was 0 for five. Look at third and short. State's two for three. They're three for six. So State even better in the third and short category. But a major difference on third downs, including explosive plays and and scoring plays in State's case. So let's look at third downs. Why some of them work for State and why some of them didn't work for LSU. Here's State's first big conversion on third and long. It's third and 13 in the first quarter. They hit Mitchell over the middle. Watch the play three by one. They're going to go six-man protection with the back staying in. Steps up. Finds him late. Big completion for a first down. Kind of set the tone for what was to come. So first of all, the route. Three by one with a back in the backfield. Four receivers. Outside, backside going to mesh with the inside receiver From the right, meshing over the ball here on third and 13. The second receiver to the three receiver side is runoff vertical. You're going to see outside Osiris Mitchell trail and come off his rear end and get across the field right there. That's what actually winds up happening on the route. In terms of the pass rush, again, they gave you a three man front here early in the game. Uh, Nickel personnel, they walk five down in there, bring the corner, but it's still only six-man rush, and they've got six-man protection in the back, picks it up. We'll see that develop also. So on the snap, corner comes off the edge, going to get picked up by the back on third and 13, needs six-man protection. You're going to see this mesh happen with what effectively is cover three, but like for instance, the guy who's over the top here is going to try to run with the crosser because there's nobody threatening out here outside. You get the cross on the mesh in the middle. And so now, with those two defenders not switching it off and running with the mesh underneath, you got another runoff here which holds this defender and the safety that's off screen, so everything is backed up there. And now inside leverage on the snap gives him an in-break. It's simply a matter of getting him the football. That defender running out of there, gonna clear the throwing lane. And there he is, and it requires an accurate throw. And it's uh, really nicely done. That's how you convert on third and 13. Second quarter, third and 20, and they convert this. And out of what initially is a smash route, hooking up out here, and then he winds up in the middle of the field. So watch the play happen. Three-man rush, steps up, and then find him in the middle. Perfect throw. Let's look at the route. This is really interesting to me. Uh, The route is effectively... The old smash route on both sides. An underneath hitch by the outside receiver, an inside receiver getting on top, running deep corner routes. That's basically the route out of two by two. And pre-snap, you see the center fielder free safety all the way back here on the logo. He's way off the ball, you know, plus, you know, 20 yards off the ball in the middle of the field. And they've lined up here over each of your four receivers, giving you what could be You know, pre-snap, you think we're getting man-free on third and 20 because they put three down linemen with three linebackers right at the line of scrimmage. But they rotate out of it on the snap. So on the snap, this safety is going to fly out of here and get deep and try to rotate it back to cover two. Thing is, with nickel personnel, it's not really just, it's not really true cover two. It's really three deep on third and 20 and kind of sitting those corners a little bit, which covers 
the uh, hitch route. Also rotating out of it third and 20. They're only rushing three. They drop those three linebackers in coverage. He knows he has plenty of protection and plenty of time. So when KJ sets up in the pocket, he's got hitch, hitch here, which they're giving you knowing that won't get you a first down. Once he steps up, now it's a little bit of ad lib time. He's going to turn that hitch into finding a throwing lane here in the middle of the field. He's turning it up as if his quarterback's scrambling almost. I think Costello reading that side of the field is looking at that corner, seeing him in no man's land, thinking he, he could drop into the throwing lane of the corner route on that side, which would get you a first, covered on top and underneath. Thing is, if you look, you know, you're covered on the hitch here. If he reads into the boundary, he probably throws this corner route for a first down. He's open. And even if you put this over here on the 50 on the sideline, he may run it down. It's dependent on whether the safety could get there and make a play. But as soon as he steps up and the clock in everybody's head goes off, now Gardner, the receiver, is going to turn it up and say, I'm going to find a throwing lane in the middle of the field. He senses that, and I, I don't know, but I think this is a, looks like a little bit of an ad-lib play. Puts the ball just off the shoulder of that linebacker. Just an incredibly um, accurate throw for college quarterback. And a conversion on third and 20. On offense... State was aggressive on third downs. Down the distance didn't really matter. They just go for it. Kind of full send. They just throw the ball out there, see what happens. You know, on defense, their third down defense was really good because they turned up the energy and the pressure. They tackled really well on third downs. They pressured the quarterback on third downs. State was just much better on third downs in the game. Here's a third and 12 for LSU and a twist right here on the right side of the defensive line is gonna get in the face of the quarterback. Inside rush, interrupt his ability to step up, you get it incomplete. And just real quick, if you wanna look at kinda of how they get this done, it looks like you know a four-man front with two linebackers, but personnel, it's actually three down linemen, three linebackers, true to what the defense is. They line up with a tight end, three receivers to the wide side of the field, single receiver into the boundary, so State Shows two safeties in the middle of the field as if it, you know, it's like a cover two look, which is two safeties, which would mean he's got a half of the field deep, he's got a half of the field deep on that hash. But they kind of rotate out of it and give him quarters on the snap, meaning this corner is going to sit up and play a hard corner. He's going to bail and have responsibility of half the field. And then over here, you're going to have quarter deep, quarter deep responsibility. So they just roll it on him just a little bit give you better deep coverage on third and 12 to the side where there are three receivers there. Jordan Davis sets up the offensive tackle to the outside so he can make the inside move. Spencer coming around the outside. Quarterback's holding the ball because linebackers have dropped to their depth. He's covered in the slot initially, and he's running into a safety. He's taking his eyes off of him. Back's going to check but run into a squatting corner. Pretty good coverage. Since that, and he just doesn't have time to hold the ball because of that twist. Here comes the rusher in his face, and he's forced to get rid of it. Okay, this was third and ten when you had the pick six trying to go to the crosser in the middle of the field. We'll watch it. Three receivers to that side, comes back to that crosser, and it's just a throw behind him that allowed the linebacker to catch up. Now, it is tight coverage, and that's why he's able to make that play. Now, they kind of have what they wanted, though. Four down linemen, that's the only rush you're going to get on third and ten. The back Colin Hill checks and then uh, swings to the left, and that pulls one of the underneath defenders out of there. See, and I think already right now, he knows my back's going here. That's pulling him. I got nobody in the middle of the field. All I got to do is get a win right here by the third man inside on that end break. And right now, he actually has him at the ball throw now. You know, the thing is, I think this is right. You need a full 10 yards. He's at five right now. You've got to, you know, hope he clears and you can hit him on a dead run where he can pull away from there and make that first down. Problem is, he just threw it behind him. Really, just about the one or two bad throws. Um, I say bad throws, off target a little bit throws. That one a little bit behind allows him to catch up and make the pit. Here he is going to take a one-on-one -on, -one on third and ten, throw it in there for a touchdown. Shavers lined up wide right, single receiver. You got three over here in the back. So. Technically, including the running back, it's four receivers to the wide side of the field and just one guy that you could potentially throw it to into the boundary. Uh, third and 10, they gave him 
two high safety look with the ball on the right hash right there. And he just chooses the one on one look, using his eyes, looks away. You know, TV copy showed you that he got a good uh, jump there, kind of beat him at the line of scrimmage. And then it's safety trying to get over. We've beat that corner over there. I got to throw it in this window, whole shot effectively against a, a too high safety. And he completes it. One thing that I just thought I'd go back and point out, you look at this. This is one-on-one -on -one go route open, obviously. Right here, third man inside is crossing the field, obviously. And he's wide open for a first down, the first down stick right here. And you're also going to get another win in the hash here if he'd gone to this side. He's got a touchdown on that side too. The most impressive thing about the play is the accuracy of the throw when he's got a another color jersey about to hit him and he knows that everything, every alarm in his head is going off right now. I'm going to get hit. I'm going to get hit. Yet he pays no attention and it's delivered on time and you're going to be accurate. A little bit of rush doesn't affect the throw. Mesh right over the ball, very shallow on third and 10. And uh, it's really interesting how this play works out. It's the long touchdown that was thrown just over the reach of the defender. We'll take a look at it. There you see the mesh, throw it over his head, turn it into a big play up the field, touchdown. Now, without seeing the uh, widest shot, it's really hard to kind of tell exactly what they wind up doing in that back end of the secondary. But to me, it looks like some type of zone. You see this defender turn and try to defend on the uh, inside. You see a corner eventually turn and run with nobody underneath. Um, it's hard to kind of figure out what the coverage is because everybody underneath is in man responsibility. What you get here is a Cyrus Mitchell crossing on the mesh. This defender, number one, runs with him step for step, chases him all the way across the field. Uh, same thing with third man inside. Linebacker turns and chases him across the field. And the same thing with this linebacker in the back. Um, the back, Kylan Hill, gets out this way. Linebacker runs with him. So it's definitely a you know a matchup or a man look underneath. They give you a more of a soft zone look over the top, some type of combo coverage. The thing is with this mesh built in, if they were to jump in straight man to man and really come after you, it gives you a quick throw to get rid of the football. If not, and in this case they're double twist trying to get pressure with just a four-man rush you get it picked up you can throw the football and they do get it picked up so it's a rub route right in the middle of the field and again if it's zone you ought to have a defender waiting out here right or at least able to turn and keep it from being a touchdown and i think maybe he just follows the route inside because the ball is held a little longer and this is a, an incredible touch throw you drive it in there you get it picked off or batted down you loft it up. It's a much harder throw with less room. I mean, it's uh, really a perfect throw. And then once he catches it, the entire defense has run away. Now, the protection was really good. It's five offensive linemen, obviously. And uh, you're working two on two to the left and three on two to the right, the back, either straight out or checking first. So they're going to inside move and then bring it back around on a twist you watch this tackle on this side pick it up. They pass that off really well. Now they've got it protected. Over here, they get it passed off. The guy's kind of squeezing through, but it's still decent enough where he can step up. Getting a little bit of a leak, but you haven't wholesale let him go. Stand in there and make an accurate throw. Really nice concentration as well. Back over to the defense, third and goal. This was a really big play right here in the ball game. LSU trying to get a little two-man route working into the boundary to the right side. But a protection bust, Errol Thompson comes through and snuffs it out with a sack. Show you what happened. State's got three linemen, three-man front here down on the goal line. It's what they do. Walking linebackers up one gap here one gap over so you're getting in every gap with the way you're coming you're still only bringing five playing coverage against uh, a shotgun look here which is three by one uh, receivers on the snap you work backside it's one-on-one -on -one here with that outside linebacker the left guard because he is covered has a man in his face so he's not stepping over to help center right so therefore center is solo versus that nose guard and what it has done has put a single rusher over here. They drop off the edge, 
And now the guard picks up that single rusher, but center's covered, guard's covered, neither pass it off and pick up the blitzing linebacker in the A-gap. Now, as quick as this is happening, even though he's free in the middle, if you get a bust here in your coverage and run out, he's going to throw this hitch for a touchdown before he gets hit. If you get a bust on the outside and run with somebody you're not supposed to, you're going to flip it to the running back before you get hit. So coverage is uh, to the side that he's trying to read, the two-man side, is also a reason why you're able to get there and make the play bang, bang. If it's picked up and he's not getting hit right here and it's covered right here, he's going to flip his head and throw a touchdown right here to the inside hitch. So great team defense on third and goal. Third quarter, third and 10. State converts here with that uh, mess that turns into a deeper route. Again, four-man rush, you get protection. We'll look at it. They cross. Javante Payton comes all the way across, lead him up the field. Big throw and catch. Again, not able to see the entire picture as it develops, but pre-snap anyway, they give you two high safeties with hard corners on both sides. That's a classic cover two look, two deep safeties, hard corners. Um, Easy to play some sort of man out of that if you want to rotate down to an end zone. That's why people like it. Four-man rush is what you get, but the back's going to check. So the route um, turns into this. Mesh underneath, two inside receivers meshing over the ball, crossing, rub route. I say mesh and rub route, Uh, whatever um, terms you want to use. It's interesting. On the outside, you both get inside releases from both inside uh, outside receivers. Instead of outside goes, you get inside goes, which kind of clears the sidelines if the mesh takes it all the way out there. The fifth part of the route, is the back checks the linebackers, they don't come, he gets out of there to be a safety valve. And that's what happens. Four-man rush versus five-man protection, plenty of time. Linebacker eyes the back, runs out of there, clears the middle of the field. Rub route happening right here in the middle with this clear out on the back side. Now, it's third and ten. You see that he sees the receiver. You know, you'd be tempted to give it to him now, correct? The receiver's not looking. He's taking it to the next level. So what started here as a crosser and a rub route has now turned almost into a vertical where there's nothing out here but space, and we're going to run it up there, make it a perfect throw, turn it into a vertical route. Really a neat concept. Ten-point game, fourth quarter on third and ten for LSU. State only rushes five but get to the quarterback. See five-man rush, spin around, kind of force him forward into a guy who's coming. I thought, You know, you look at this, again, you can't see everything that's happening in the secondary, but I I thought this was interesting. There are 3-3 defense, but this looks like 4-2, right, with uh, nickel in the game. But really what it is is three defensive lineman personnel, and the play over here with his hand down is a linebacker personnel. So they're using, you know, hybrid players to kind of give you different looks. The other thing that they're doing is sort of matching up in a man-free coverage, free safety in the middle, they're going to match this up. Um, so this linebacker have the responsibility of the back if he goes out in a route, and you're going to rush these four and one linebacker, five versus six man protection. So how do they get to the quarterback? Well, the first thing that happens is just man on man, state wins in the face on the throwing side of the quarterback. You get just enough outside where he feels that he knows he's got to step up, Here's relentless pass rush, spin move to try to get, find a lane to the QB. Same thing from another defender. So now you have two rushers on one blocker. Quarterback absolutely senses it and should. And another player, the nose guard, who had been blocked back but hasn't given up, and now he's going to attack and clean this thing up. And the ball doesn't come out, and you get a big sack on third and ten. So again, you look at it, it's three on three on this side, and State is just more aggressive. Plus, you've run a twist here that's bringing Kobe Jones around to get him free where you have that two-on-two. Has to step up. You've tightened and collapsed this pocket. It's really a dirty pocket, really hard for any quarterback to see, and he never sees a nose guard come get him. Last one is on the defense, a three-point game, fourth quarter. They've got the football, and it's third and three on their end of the field here trying to run slants and get an easy completion, but they overload the protection, bring more than they can block, flush him out of there, 
and uh, you get the incomplete and get off the field. So when you take a look at how this happens, this is what hot routes are built in for in certain situations for quarterbacks. This is a deal where the back is not checking. He's out in the route. It's a five-man route in the flat to open up that slant. Double slants up top uh, from inside receivers that could potentially get you three yards. So pre-snap, he should know he's only got five-man protection, which means when you come to the line of scrimmage and you see what looks like a man-to-man look everywhere, here he's head up. Here he's head up, head up, head up, head up. That's man-to-man look, classic, all day, every day. You see that on third and three with four on the line of scrimmage and two in the middle. That's six players. If they bring all six of those, you can't block them all. You've only got five. So you know that ahead of time. And on the snap, this is protection to his backside. They're going to protect his backside first. And as soon as he sees linebacker off the edge and two in the middle coming, he should know there's more than I can block. This is a get rid of it quick. The question is, where is the unblocked player coming from? Tackle steps down inside like he should, and it's right off the edge. Uh, Davis, number six, is free right in his face. Now, he's got slants, right? He's got one coming here, here, and here. It's a built-in hot throw because the hot route is a short slant route. So what he's got to do is even though he's going to get hit, this ball's got to come out right now. Boom, there or there, or even play side. Right before you get hit, you got to throw it right off the hip of this linebacker who's going to cover. But hang on the ball, and you take that, not that sack, but you get rushed out of there trying to improvise and defense able to get off the field. All right. Hope you enjoyed that. Good content? Good content. See you on the next one. Thanks for watching. See you.